Hey guys, Dustin here. Some, uh, we're having some cigar shenanigans out here on the porch. And yes, this is the same cigar that I was smoking in the past two videos because I'm a, I'm a cheap ass and a rotten bastard. Uh, I got one more test before I get to go back home. Well, actually, I'm not going home. I'm going hunting in uh, Central Texas for a few days. And uh, with my dad, you know, it's something we really enjoyed. I've, you know, hunted my whole life, and uh, always enjoyed hunting with dad. Got some great stories, and I was just thinking, you know, if any of you are hunters out there, what's your best hunting story? You know, what's a funny hunting story? A funny Christmassy hunting story. I think one of mine would be. is I was hunting with my grandfather and uh, he's in the 70s he's a real crazy old guy you know how old people are and uh, he didn't like to hunt he liked to go out and take walks and a uh, man could never sit in the stand and just hunt he was always wanting to get out of the stand go take walks so me and him one day were on one of his walks we climbed down the stand and uh, he wanted to go look at this old camper that we had on our our lease he had all these big dreams of taking it back to Houston fixing it up making it nice blah blah, blah. this camper was a real shithole floors rotted out of water damage I mean it was nasty so we get in there and uh, looking through all the drawers you know I'm a little kid I'm sitting there being nosy I'm opening up drawers and whatnot and I open up this drawer, there's this gerbil in there. And being gerbil, I mean a big rat. This rat was probably, you know, a good seven, eight inches long, just sitting in there in that damn cabinet, hiding in there in the bottom. So my dumbass grandpa, he, uh, he's like, my son, grab that thing. Go down there, he said, grab it and get it out of there. So I'm like scared to death of this thing. I'm not, there's no way in hell, you know, that I'm reaching in there and grabbing this damn gerbil. And those motherfuckers will bite you, they carry diseases, there's no telling what'll happen. So I'm like sitting there dicking around trying to, you know, reach down there, can't get my hand down there, I'm too afraid to grab it. And uh he says, oh, get out of the way. So he gets over there. Just as soon as he goes to grab it out of the cabinet, what does it do? It it like prances out of the cabinet and jumps on him. <laughs> and this this gerbil is on my grandpa like crawling up his shirt. He's like ah! And they're screaming like a little girl. I thought he was going to pass out. Oh, God. It scared the shit out of him. I bet he shit all over himself. I think he, I really think he pissed on himself. It wasn't not even a couple minutes later. He was over at the side of the camper over there taking a piss. I think he leaked a little on himself. Another mischievous thing that I did. No, that wasn't mischievous what I did, but. One morning I decided not to go hunting, and uh, sorry if the, the sun's kind of blocking the light and stuff. One morning I decided not to go hunting, and so we always had these BB guns, these little red red riders at our uh, at our camp house. And uh, anyways, you know I was I would wake up and be bored, and so I got up one morning, and. Uh, Always lots of little birds outside. I'd put some seeds out the night before. You know, I knew the birds would be there. I'd shoot dove, cardinals, you know, whatever bird really came up there. Anyways, I picked my head around the, the corner of the cabin and got, got the BB gun up there and popped me a bird. And, uh, you know, they all, they all like fly and take off. So, anyways, I, uh, there was one that was up on a ledge on what we called our wool wagon it was a uh, it was an old Ford truck that we had and it was all camoed out it was a, kind of our, our camp truck we hauled deer and stuff in it and carried corn it had a feeder on the back it was just a shitty old truck so there's this bird sitting on the edge of the top of the wool wagon up there right above the window so Davy Crockett here which is me 
I'm a David, I'm a David Crockett. Crockett. So, yeah, I can shoot that bird. So I remember I got the BB gun back up. I think I inched it, you know, a couple inches above, above its head. And I'll be damned if when I didn't fire, I saw the damn uh, glass crack on that war wagon. I knew I was fucked then. I done shot the window out. It's a cold ass morning. Dad's gonna kill me. You know, I don't know where we're gonna find a window at for this thing. Uh, the the inside could just be ruined. You know, with the with the broken window. So basically, I lied to Dad. Told him I didn't do it. He figured it out, and uh, I got my ass pretty tore up over it. But it was one of those one of those things in life. It was a, it was you know a good story to tell later on down the road. I was telling Dad, I was like, I don't know how it happened. I said. I saw a bird hit it and the, and the window just shattered. <laughs> God, up to no good. Jesus Christ. I had a bad, or I was a bad, bad child. But I'm thankful that my parents believed in disciplining because a lot of parents don't, think, don't believe in that stuff nowadays. I'm glad that they, you know, spanked me or tore my ass up every time I did something wrong. Because if we had a few more adults that would do that to their kids now, you know, nowadays, the world would be a whole lot safer place. You wouldn't have these little rapers, murderers, and these little trashy ass, uh, punk ass kids growing up. Somebody gave them a few good ass whippings. They'd know what, you know, they'd straighten up real fast. It's the problem with schools nowadays. Schools don't do corporal punishment anymore. And that just that takes away from everything. Just about teachers can't do anything. They send them to the office. The office can't spank them. I'm like, what the hell? You know, my parents would have said, beat his ass. That's why I'm gonna raise my kids. Corporal punishment rules. And every time a kid moves out of line, you punish them for it. You know, it, you you just can't forgive and forget like a lot of people do nowadays with these little easy methods of so-called punishment. Oh, we're gonna put you in timeout. We're gonna ground you. Grounding never worked. I just got my ass beat, and that was it. I understood from then on that I, no, I do not need to do that anymore. I don't know how I got off on that subject, but anyways, guys, I'm gonna finish smoking the cigar, and I hope you guys have a good day. I'm gonna get this video put up here in a little while, and until uh, next time, we'll see you later. You two, enjoy your smokes.